welcome to the lecture series on engineering geology. Today, let us discuss about the importance of physical geology in civil engineering constructions. What is physical geology? It is a scientific discipline that is concerned with the aspects of earth structure, composition, physical properties, constituent rocks, minerals and surfacial features. So the picture here shown gives us, gives us the different layers of earths uh, like starting from crust which is the outermost layer and inside there is a mantle and, uh, and deep inside we have core which is divided into two zones inner core and outer core. So at each and every level the temperatures are different and also the pressures are different. Therefore the state of the material that is present in different uh, zones of the or in different layers of the earth are completely different. So in that aspects our most of our constructions are and more, our constructions are basically only on the crust. Though we are not interested in understanding the core and mantle features, the crust co components that are the rocks which are present on the crust are out of a, are are formed out of different phenomena that happen inside the earth. So the history of formation of the rocks on the crust is very important for understanding the mechanical properties and other properties that are required for our construction purposes. So the rocks, all, not only the rocks, but also his, its history and the formation type is all important. Apart from the inner core of the earth, we also have to deal with the atmospheric conditions and atmospheric changes that influence the rock. So all these features, if the physical conditions of the uh, geological structures, which include not only rocks, but all the, also the soil patterns and the different structures, geological structures like folds, faults, and many other such features are important in understanding where the construction should be present and how the constructions has to happen, what is the material that is required to undertake the construction process. All these things uh, play a pay major role in uh, in deciding the uh, factors that are required for the construction industry. Now let us dig deep into how this physical geology is important for few of the or, or for major of the civil engineering constructions. So one such application is identifying the pattern of rock distribution. So the rocks are present at different locations but the distribution is also different along with the type of the rock. The same rock can be present at a certain location, at certain depth, but at another location, the same type of rock is available at a different depth. So you need to know the distribution of the rocks or distribution of the type of soil at different locations at the site of concern. So the depth of rock type is very important because we have different types of foundations that are usually used used in the construction of buildings or infrastructure. So each type of foundation will have a certain depth. Suppose, for example, for isolated footings, it may not need to go much deeper, more than three kilometers or three meters, whereas piles and pile caps, which need a greater depth. So we need to know what type of foundation has to be carried out for the construction that we are planning to make. In that scenario, we also need to know the depth of the rock that is present at that particular instant or at that particular area of, of interest. Along with the depth of the rock, as we have discussed, the probable distribution of rocks or distribution of soils is important. So the distribution involves, but the, uh, it is usually done by the borehole measurement throughout the area of the measurement, I mean area of interest. In that case, we, are, we have to find out at different locations, what is the depth of the rock? What is the borehole capacity? So, with uh, with with a finer finer mesh size of the boreholes, we will be able to know the deeper insights into the distribution of the soils, different types of soils. So, the figure here gives the uh, distribution of soil at a particular site. So, the layers are not uniform, are not 
lateral or 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 parallel to the earth surface they are very jagged in that case at a bore hole we will get certain type of soil such as quartz if we take quartz this type of soil is available at a, at some depth minimum i mean at at a particular depth uh, at at a certain location whereas at certain other location it may be available somewhere at very low depths and at this location it may be available at very deeper depths so all these things we can identify through the geological uh, 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 understanding then next comes the stability of excavation or cutting so how far we have to cut or how far we have to excavate at a particular site so we have we, our, our terrain is not uniform terrain is very uh the topography of a particular area is very very uh uh random random in the sense uh, there are hills there are small hills and undulations are present everywhere because of various geological processes that happen during a course of time so in that case the stability of excavation or stability of cutting is very important so for a building which has to be present on a soil the soil has to be uh, made or the the surface the uh, surface where the construction has to happen has to be made uniform or it has to be made on a flat ground to make it a flat ground at certain locations we need to excavate at certain locations we need to uh, uh, cut the excess portion suppose it is the foot of a hill so we need to cut the portion like the figure shown here we'll see the uh, the uh, building has to happen and at the edge we need this cutting to happen now the problem arises when the excavation or the cutting has to be stable because away from the away from the uh, building also we will have soil which may be uh, undulated not a flat terrain but what happens there is we we understand our foundations we we uh, assume that our foundations are completely packed with soil so they have certain resistance or the certain uh, uh, holding capacity uh, such that the building doesn't overturn or topple so to maintain that we need to have the soil all throughout this area in that case we also have to ensure the effective area which is required for the soil which is required for flexi i mean which is required for the rigidity of the soil is very important in that case we need to know the stability of the excavation that we do just beside that influent soil so that stability will come i mean we will we will be able to understand the stability only through assessing the shear strength of the material and the weathering of the rocks that is present there so the shear strength of the material is again now we have to resort to the ge engineering geology knowledge uh, where shear strength is calculated or estimated through various processes so shear strength of the material will give us occurrence of weakness i mean planes of weaknesses so we have we will get to know uh, where if suppose if suppose the uh, the soil has to fail where it is going to fail and how it is going to fail and plane of weakness all these things have to be estimated much before the construction is happening and the amount of cohesion and friction that is present in the soil layers that is also has to be estimated along with that this is a physical feature that is present on the soil but there is another feature we will discuss in the next lecture series is that the weathering of rocks so because of various atmospheric conditions the rocks do weather so so the effect of density of the rock is also to be estimated at the time of construction because what happens to the density uh, we need to assess during the construction itself and then concentrated at planes of weaknesses so the weathering is concentrated at the planes of weaknesses because they are the weak zones so all these things have to be estimated when we are going to construction then coming to impervious natural basin for reservoirs like 
at the when when we are planning to construct reservoirs or dams what happens is that we need to find out what is the probable location of the dam which can be constructed with lesser uh, engineering aspects in the sense that the actual stream of the uh, water should be in such a way that it allows the dam to re resist it if there is a very huge flow then definitely a dam construction itself will be tough and also a dam uh, uh, should maybe uh, if it is i mean uh, if uh, maybe will not be able to sustain that water force in addition along with this water uh, conditions we also have to estimate what is the narrowest passage where we can construct our dam because it is always suggested that this dam has to be held by a very strong rock in that case the rock should be very strong enough which is required to hold the dam also it should have a very narrow passage sufficiently maybe we can say an optimum uh, passage such that the construction material will be very very less so the optimum material usage can be maintained because dam is not just few meters it is very high, i mean it, it the scale of dam the scale of construction or the scale of material usage will be more when compared to a building or a small construction so such features have to be identified in assessing the natural basin for a dam we also have to study <clears throat> the strength of the rock or strength of the hill or strength of the valley that is actually holding the dam in that case we also have to estimate the fault zones or the folds that that are present in the rocks so the physical features that are there in the rocks which hold the dam are very very important because in most of the cases in most of the case studies which happened in the past show us that the weakness of the soil or weakness of the rock will allow us leakage of water from the reservoir so such leakages though our dam though the engineering marvel is still standing if leakage happens through rocks then there is nothing we can do uh, uh, to stop it or to retain the water in the reservoir and in addition it damages the dam itself so the leakages have to be identified much before and proper measures have to be undertaken to close them or to change the location itself so at the um, uh, suitability also we can estimate through the geological conditions that are present in the rocks at that particular location then coming to geological difficulties of tunneling see tunneling is some digging which is happening inside a very rocky terrain or a hill in that case the major problem uh, i mean there are very very uh, Uh, many geological difficulties in tunneling and out of that one most important aspect is the presence of deep sore of sea floor so we need to know whether there is any sea floor beneath uh, the the mountain or the hill to understand that we need to do geological exploration this helps us in understanding i mean in in taking care about the inrush of water suddenly during the construction is happening or during the excavation is happening then coming to ease of extraction at soft rock so if the rock is very very soft it breaks very easily we we can know from the study of the rock that is present in the hill we will understand what is the what is the amount of blast or what is the strength of the blast that we have to do at that particular location for excavation if it is very soft it overbreaks the rock overbreaks if the rock is very soft it overbreaks so such phenomena will lead to complete destabilization of the complete hill or it will create a lots of i mean uh, debris debris clear, clearance that is required during the tunneling process which increases the cost of construction so we need to exactly estimate the rock capacity or the whether the rock is hard or soft and what have what actually is what are the different properties that are present now this also helps us in avoiding the rock fall from the roof during construction it is quite often that soft rock will fall during the construction 
So in that case, we can also avoid those rock falls from the roofs. Then, now coming to another important aspect of geology, which is petrology and structural geology. So these two are also very, very important for our civil engineering constructions, civil engineering uh, projects. So what is petrology? Petrology is about study of rocks, their origin, composition, structure and classification. So physical geology is includes everything. It is something like rocks, soil, their distribution and then um, uh, their, their uh, 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 the, the, the faults and folds that are present in the uh, different strata and how they are affecting everything. Now petrology is much more narrower branch where we discuss only about rocks, not the soils. So the composition of rocks, the origin of rocks, the history of rocks, the structure of rocks and different classification of rocks. And in different classification of rocks, we also have to deal with the history of rocks, when they have formed, how they have formed and what they are today. Because we also have a phenomena called weathering. So with atmospheric uh, conditions, our rocks change their properties. So all these factors we will, we will have to estimate during a construction project. Now, <clears throat> Coming to specific applications of petrology and structural geology in civil engineering is one such application is material selection. So what kind of materials we have to use? So there are different kinds of materials that we can use for constructions. See, we have many number of building typologies. Though we are aware of RC reinforced concrete buildings, we also know in India specifically, we have 100 to 150 varieties of buildings which are called building typologies. So we can see moment resisting frame is the most common in urban areas. But in rural areas, we have mud masonry buildings, brick masonry buildings, stone buildings, stone masonry buildings. And in specific areas, we have the Jidivari buildings. They are all the varieties of buildings. And then we have uh, wooden buildings. Uh, so many, many constructions, many, many material types are different and the way they are constructed are also different. Out of all these construction typologies, we can, we can have, we always have a choice to which type of material we can use. To, uh, I mean, to, to use, I mean, to find out which kind of material to be used, we also have to estimate different types of rocks, different types of uh, properties of rocks, such that they can be used in our construction materials. So suppose stone masonry buildings have to be constructed. So what kind of rocks to be used there? Okay. So we need to know the actual properties of the rocks that are available nearby because transportation will be a problem. So in reinforced concrete buildings, what kind of rock has to be used? For making concrete, we use smaller size of rocks. Now they have to made be uh, they have to be made smaller to accommodate for the con uh, concrete, for the for making of concrete. So in that case, <clears throat> in that case, what kind of rock has to be present? What are the properties of rocks that have to be uh, present in order to make concrete? So all these things have to be studied much before selection of material. So locally available material is the most important and effective way of construction because there will not be any uh, transfer I mean, there will not be any transportation cost uh, uh, associated with the construction, which which is which is which is a very huge amount <clears throat> when compared to the construction. <clears throat> Sorry. In that case, so appropriate material for construction can be identified based on what are the properties that can be used. Are some of the properties that can be more popularly used are the strength of the rock, how much it, the load can be carried. See the rock. How much of the, the strength is defined as how much the rock can carry the load. So this will uh, un make us understand whether we can go for stone masonry or not. Then durability of rock. How long it can last. So any construction is minimum of 25 years of age. It has to, uh, the design life of a construction is 25 years. Reinforced concrete construction. So in that case, for 25 years, it has to withstand. Then coming to porosity. 
Porosity is nothing but how many number of pores are present in the rock. Such that this also is directly related to the strength of the rock. Then permeability. Whether it can allow water or not. Whether it absorbs water or not. Suppose if a rock absorbs water, what will happen? It will loosen in the meantime. So gradually it will lose its strength. So all these parameters have to be estimated when finding out the building material that has to be used for the construction. Then coming to site characterization. Now we need to understand what type of soil or what type of rock is present at a particular site. We need to categorize the site for a particular construction to happen. Suppose if we have to construct a dam, certain, site, certain characteristics of the site have to be present in order to qualify the site as a dam construction site. The same case is with the tunnel. So any hill cannot carry the tunnel or any um, like tunneling cannot happen under any hill. So there are very specific places uh, and that uh, process of identifying the place is called site characterization. Now characterizing this geological conditions of the site is what is required from the engineering geology. <clears throat> so we need to understand what are the geological conditions of the site. What are geological conditions? What type of rock is present? What folds are present? What faults are present? What are the layers that are present? And what is the pattern of rock that is present at the site? So all these things, what they will do, what, what the geological condi condition suggests is that it helps in assessing the suitability of site for construction. So the particular type of construction, whether it should happen at that location or not. See, in a river stream, we have many locations for the dam to happen, but what is the suitable site for the dam to take place? And in, in the case of uh, tunnels, what is the suitable location of the tunnel that can happen in a particular rock? So all these things we can identify through the site characterization. Then coming to foundation design. As we have discussed already, we have different number of foundations, different types of foundations like isolated footings, strip footings, raft footings, pile foundations and combined footings and, and a combination of both, pile, raft, both, right? So all these types of footings are present, foundations are present. So the knowledge of properties of underlying rocks will help us to understand what kind of foundation can be, uh, can take place during that, I mean, during the construction at that particular location. See, there are two parameters in deciding the type of foundation. One is what is the load that it has to carry and also what is the load that the soil can carry in such a way that we can plan the foundation, right? So one aspect is from the construction point of view and another aspect is from the soil point of view. We need to understand what type of foundation is present. I mean, is, um, is the soil capable of resisting or carrying this foundation type or not? We need to answer this before finding out, before finding out the type of foundation. So in designing foundations to support the loads, see finally the foundations has to have to transfer the load to the soil. Now soil has to carry that load. If it is not able to soil, what will happen? It will settle. Once it settles, it develops additional forces in the structure, which if they are designed for, then they can carry. If they are not designed for, the, it leads to the building collapse. So the soil capacity in one way is helping us to take care of the construction much before the loading is happening. So we, if, we, if, if we know that the soil cannot carry, if there is a chance, we reinforce the soil or if there is no chance, at least we design the structure in such a way that fewer settlements can happen. Okay, if settlements also happen, what are the additional forces that can uh, that that are developed in the construction in such a way that we design the building in such a way that it carries this additional settlement forces also? So all these things can be done with the understanding of rock and the uh, the properties of the rock. Then coming to rock mechanics, this area of rock, I mean this area of geology is very important in tunneling specifically to tunneling. It may be useful for other things also, but it is very specific in tunneling. 
because of uh, rock mechanics we will be able to identify or in we get we will be able, uh, able to understand the behavior of rocks under stress so under stress what happens to the rocks suppose this also helps in earthquakes but also we will let us discuss about tunnels first now this is very essential in designing of underground structures where we are making a tunnel or mining so what happens during the stress if stress is removed how the rock is going to behave see now when we are excavating we are we are ensuring we are we are actually stressing the rock in that case when when that stress is present how the rock behaves this a knowledge of uh, behavior of rock when stress is present is very important to take uh, to take uh, uh, decision making of uh, how the tunneling should happen and whether the site is suitable or not so rock mechanics is one of the very very important factors or important areas of geology uh, or structural uh, geology where tunneling is the important application so these are the references for all the figures present so with this we would like to end the importance of physical geology and petrology and structural geology thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates